Hello again, everyone, and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to give Fedora some attention because you guys really love Fedora. Believe me, I know. In this video, what we're going to do is take a look at the process of dual booting Fedora and Windows 11. And this is great for those of you that can't completely switch to Linux for whatever reason. Maybe you have a work requirement to use Windows sometimes, or maybe you like both Windows and Linux. I don't judge. In this video, I'm going to show you how to dual boot both. Now, it probably goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. I want to make sure that everyone backs up all of their important files before they go through this process. Now, I don't have any reason to believe that this process will fail for any reason, but chaos theory being what it is, make sure that you take an image backup of your computer if you can, or at least back up your files just in case. And we'll get started shortly, but first, I wanted to let you guys know that I have two brand new courses available over on Udemy. First, if you're in the process of learning Linux for the very first time, you should definitely check out my Linux Essentials course. Not only will this course teach you everything you need to know to get started and learn the basics of Linux, it's also going to help you get certified and earn your Linux Essentials credential through LPI. And the Linux Professional Institute is the world's largest Linux and open source focused vendor neutral certification body. So by earning certifications through LPI, your credentials will be recognized around the world. But even if you don't have any interest in getting certified, this course is still a great fit for those of you that are getting started with Linux because it'll teach you all the basics. Also, I recently released an Ansible course as well, which will teach you everything you need to know to get up and running with Ansible. Ansible is one of, if not the most popular configuration and automation platforms in the Linux ecosystem, so it's definitely something that you need to learn. Ansible is a powerful and easy to learn platform that'll enable you to automate even the most complicated Linux administration tasks. And just like with my Linux course, each lesson will break down even the most complicated components and concepts into easy to understand lessons. And by the end of the course, you'll learn everything that you need to know to use Ansible as part of your daily tool set. Thank you guys so much for supporting Learn Linux TV. I really appreciate it. Now let's get started and see the process of dual booting Fedora and Windows 11. And here we are. Now, before we go any further, I do want to point out that I am recording this from real hardware. You're not going to be seeing a virtual machine or anything like that, because on this channel, whenever possible, I always use real hardware. If that's something that you think is pretty cool, then be sure to click that subscribe button because, well, you'll get more of that by subscribing to this channel. The very first thing we're going to do is make sure that Windows is completely up to date. Every now and then an update might come along that could break your ability to boot into Windows. So we at least want to make sure that we're completely up to date before we get started. So what I'll do is just search for update. And we'll search for updates. And right now on my end is telling me that I am up to date. So I don't need to update anything. I've already done that off camera. But on your end, just make sure that you've already completed that step. Anyway, what we're going to do is just open up a web browser. So in my case, I have one right here. Doesn't matter which one. And what we're going to do is navigate to getfedora.org. Once there, we'll scroll down. And what we're going to do is install Fedora Workstation. So let's download it. Now, what I recommend you do is use the Media Writer. It's the easiest way to create bootable media. What you'll do is grab a flash drive and you'll dedicate it as your Fedora installer. Make sure that you back up any important files you might have on your flash drive before you do that though. Anyway, what we'll do is download it. And now it's done, so let's open it. And let's go through it. So I'll click I agree, install. And then next, and let's finish. All right, so here we have the Fedora Media Writer. What we'll do is leave it on download automatically. We'll click next. We'll choose an official version. And if you click right here, we have a few different versions here, but also, and let's see what else we have. As you can see here, we have Silver Blue. There's also some spins that you could check out if you want. 
So if you want to install the Plasma desktop instead of the default GNOME release of Fedora, you could absolutely do that. You can even check out the i3 version, the Sway version, There's all kinds of cool things here that you could check out. But what I'm going to do is leave it on official editions. And if you're following along with me, what you'll do is choose Fedora Workstation. We'll click next. Let's make sure that we're on the latest version. As of recording time, 41 is beta, so 40 is the newest. Just a good idea to check that. Anyway, let's click download and write. And now it's downloading. So what we'll do is just wait for this to finish. All right, so now what we're going to do is insert a flash drive. Just be sure that you don't mind it being completely erased before you do. I'll insert mine right now. So what I'll do is click right. And I'll wait for it to finish. All right, so it looks like we're done. So what I'll do is click finish. And then we could close out of the Fedora Media Writer. And let's restart our computer. Now what we'll do is try to access the boot selection menu for our computer, which could be different depending on who made your computer. Could be F7, F12, F11, F10. Those are some of the keys that I could think of off the top of my head. On mine here, it's F12, as you can see. It's listed down here on the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to press F12. And that takes me to this screen right here where I could choose my boot device. So what I'll do is choose this one right here. I just know it's this one because I've done this probably a hundred times now. So I'll click on it. Now on your end, I recommend that you test the media before installing. I just want to jump ahead so I can get right into the installation. Anyway, we'll press enter. All right, check it out. We have Fedora running already. It's running directly off our flash drive in live mode. And what that means is that you can actually try Fedora before you install it. In fact, that's exactly what you should do. So what I'll do is choose not now. Click that right here. Now on my end, I have a 4K display. So what I'm going to do is just increase the scaling to make it easier for you guys to see. If you have any vision constraints of any kind, you might want to do this anyway. What I'll do is go to displays and I'm going to choose 200%. I'll apply the change, keep the changes. And now as you can see, everything's a bit easier to read. I'll leave it up to you whether or not you like this kind of thing, if you like scaling, but I think it looks better in the video. Anyway, speaking of displays, this would be a great opportunity to ensure that multiple displays works with Fedora on your machine before you install it. So if you are planning on using an external display of any kind or multiple displays, I do recommend that you set that up right now. Just make sure that it works before you install Fedora. Now, another thing that you might want to do is click up here, we have a selection for Wi-Fi, as you can see. We want to make sure that Wi-Fi works before we install Fedora. So what I'll do is just select my network. And let's see if I can even remember the password. Anyway, we are connected because we see the Wi-Fi icon right here. If you are using wired Ethernet, you might see a wired icon right here. And the next thing that I recommend you do is access the Activities Overview by clicking this icon right here. And then we'll open up a web browser. Next, what you can do is navigate to any website, doesn't matter which one. I just want you to make sure that audio works. And a great way to do that is to click on a video to play the video and see whether or not you're going to get audio. Definitely want to make sure that we do get audio. So on my end, everything should be in working order. So what I'm going to do is go back to Activities Overview, clicking right here, and down here we have an icon for installing Fedora. So what we'll do is click on that right here. And here's the installer. Sorry to interrupt my own video, but I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate each and every single one of you and I love creating Linux related content for you guys. But unfortunately, producing high quality Linux content like this isn't cheap. But if you want to help me make even more content for you guys, then consider supporting Learn Linux TV. And a great way to do that is to check out the official shop for Learn Linux TV, which was just recently updated. Inside the shop, you'll find distro themed shirts, bags, drinkware, and more.
And there's some other surprises there as well. For example, I've just introduced a mouse pad that doubles as a Tmux cheat sheet. How cool is that? So check out the shop at merch.learnlinux.tv or you could check out the merch shelf right here on YouTube. You could get yourself something really cool and support Linux learning at the same time. So it's a win-win. Anyway, thank you guys so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Now let's get back to the video. The first thing you'll do is choose your language. So go ahead and customize this however you need to. Once you are finished making your selections, you could type in this box right here to test your keyboard. And then when you're ready, we'll click continue. So what I'm going to do right now is click right here for installation destination. Here on this screen, we can set up our disk to boot Fedora, but unfortunately there's a problem. We only have a small amount of space free right here because the entire disk, this disk right here is dedicated to Windows. Now what we're going to do actually is not change anything on this screen. We'll click done. We just need to visit this screen. And then once we successfully go to this screen, we'll click done. And what that's going to do is trigger this message right here. It recognizes the fact that we want to install Fedora, but we don't have enough space to do so because Windows is taking up everything. So in order to fix this, we'll click reclaim space. Now what I'm going to do right here is click on my Windows partition. I'm going to shrink it. And what I'll do is just drag this to somewhere around here and I'll click reclaim space. Basically what we want to do is just make sure that we have an appropriate amount of space for Windows and for Fedora. So I'll just go ahead and leave it right about here and I'll click reclaim space. Next, what we'll do is click time and date. We want to ensure that we have the correct time zone associated with our computer. And in my case, I do. You can click on these drop downs to change the selection if you would like to do that. I'll click done. And I'll click begin installation. Now what I'll do is just wait for this to finish and then I'll be right back. And it looks like it's done. So let's click finish installation. And the next thing we're going to do is restart the computer, but we want to make sure that we remove the flash drive. We don't want to boot back into the Fedora installer. What we actually want to do is boot into Windows this time. We want to make sure that that still works. So what I'll do is restart. All right, now it's starting back up. And here we have the boot menu. So what I'm going to do right now is choose Windows. Again, we just wanna make sure that it works. So I'll press enter. And check it out. It looks like Windows is working just fine. So if I go to the file explorer right here and we check out the PC right here, we can see that I've successfully shrunk my one terabyte partition down to just over 500 gigabytes. Now what we're going to do is ensure that Fedora works. We'll restart. This time I'm not going to do anything at all. I'm going to let it auto boot into Fedora. And here we go. Welcome to Fedora Linux version 40. So let's go ahead and click right here. We get a little helpful menu so we can select a few things if we want to change any of these settings. Now you probably do want to enable this. This will give you access to things like Google Chrome and some other things too. So probably something that the majority of you guys want. Let's click next. I'll type in a simple username for myself and I'll type a password. I'll confirm that password. Anyway, I click next. And it looks like it's all done. Now here we have an option to take a tour. That's going to give us some information about various features within the GNOME desktop. So this is pretty cool. And I'll let you read through this on your end.
And I'm going to have to fix the resolution though. I'm having trouble seeing pretty much anything because of my display. So we'll click right here. Let's set it to 200%. And that's much better. Anyway, what I recommend you do is go here to Activities Overview. I'm going to go to GNOME Software. And this is pretty much your App Store equivalent when it comes to Fedora. So if you want to install an application, you can go through the various categories here and install an application. But what we're going to do right now is go to Updates, and we want to download all updates for the system. So click right here to do exactly that. Next, what I'll do is click Restart and Update. That'll finish the process. Restart and install, and we'll let it finish. Now it's booting back up. We're going to allow it to boot into Fedora again. And now we're installing updates. All right, so now it's booting up again. And I'll leave it on the default selection. And here we have the login screen. So I'll just go ahead and press the space bar. I'll type in my password. And check it out. Fedora is not only installed as a dual boot with Windows, it's also fully up to date. Great job. You now have your very own dual boot between Fedora and Windows 11, and I hope you enjoy it. And if you are enjoying it, then please consider clicking that like button to let YouTube know you never know, if enough people click that like button, that might mean we'll get more Linux on YouTube. That'd be awesome. Anyway, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video.